Hello there, right here, and in today's video, we will be covering 32 sneaky things that Mojang added into 1.17. These have nothing to do with the new items or mobs in the game, but small changes that have big effects. If you are wondering how to get all the new 1.17 items, check out this video. And if you're wondering how to farm up every new item, check out these two videos. And if you enjoy videos like this, I also did one about 20 bugs still in 1.17 and 15 discontinued items in the latest version. You can check out all those videos with the links down below after watching this one. There was a lot of sneaky things added in this version, so let's get started. But before we do, make sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the like button, as I will be doing a similar video to this, but about secret glitches in 1.17. In 1.16, if you had some tools that needed to be repaired, and then had the mending, and you also had some other gear which had mending, but was already full, sometimes when you got XP's, it would end up going into your XP bar, rather than going into the items that need to be repaired. This changed in 1.17, so now you will first fill up your tools and then it will fill up your XP bar. This makes all my different farms that use armor to kill mobs, like my blaze farm, my copper farm, and my dragon killing farm, and many others, much more efficient. Because you can use the XP's to directly repair the armor, and you never have to worry about it breaking. In 1.16 versions, you couldn't throw a egg or a snowball through a cobweb. It would end up just hitting it. In 1.17, now you can throw eggs right through it. You can also throw snowballs right through it. This affects things like my wither rose farm, which uses chickens. Endermites that were spawned in from a spawn egg would not make endermen mad in 1.16. In 1.17, now they will be mad at these endermites. In 1.16, if you try to increase your statistics, Let's say I want to increase my jump, if I would just jump and then I would check my stats again, you can see that there's still 12, they wouldn't update very fast. Now in 1.17, your stats will actually update much faster. So you can see that my jump is currently zero, and if I would jump and I go ahead and check it, you can now see it says one. This is awesome for being able to show exactly what your stats are at, and you won't miss any really big milestones. In 1.16, this block is called Lapis Lazulia block. But in 1.17, they changed it so that it is now called Block of Lapis Lazulia. This was done to make it like all the other ore blocks, even though their actual name is still ore underscore block. In 1.16, when spectating through lava, there was a lot of fog and it's very difficult to see very far. But in 1.17, if you spectate through it, you can easily see through it. In 1.16, shulkers could look really wonky when placed inside of boats or minecarts, and they would sit in so deep that their bottom side would actually stick out the bottom of the boat. In 1.17, they no longer turn weird angles and look strange, and they even sit properly inside of a boat. In 16, if you summon a wither, his health instantly fills up, where in 1.17, his health will slowly fill up now, showing that he is slowly gaining his strength until it's completely full and at which point you can actually start attacking him. In some cases, when entities were pushed across chunk borders, they wouldn't be saved in the new chunk and they wouldn't be saved in the old chunk, meaning that they would vanish from the game. And this most likely was causing my elder guardians to vanish in my sponge farm. In 1.17, we no longer have this problem. When using your Lytra and flying with rockets, the rockets that were used during flight weren't actually being counted towards the player's statistics. You can see here my stats, it doesn't show all the ones I shot off. Where in 1.17, if you fly with these rockets, it will now count to your statistics. So if we go into items, we can see that I used 15 of them. In 1.16, items that got smelted and then picked up into hoppers would have all their XP's stored away in the furnace. And then if the player would pull one item out, instead of getting all of the XP's in one nice bundle, the player would get all the XP's in a whole bunch of pieces, which could cause a large amount of entities and tons of leg. Where in 1.17, you still get all of the XP's off of all the items that were smelted up through the furnace, but now you will get the XP's in one big bundle, so it won't leg you out. In 1.16, you cannot put a lead onto a squid. You can only end up leading a dolphin. Now in 17, you can lead up squids and carry them around very easily. You can actually do this to all of the water creature mobs, including axolotls, as well as glow squids. Zombies normally burn in the sunlight, but they actually weren't burning if their feet were covered up by a block. 1.17, now they will burn if their head's exposed to sunlight. 
when crafting down some items, it was possible for items to actually get removed from the game during this process. 1.17, we don't have to worry about this anymore. Before you could take your silk touch pick and instantly mine blocks that were infested with silverfish and you would just get the normal block back. You could also instantly break them just by clicking on them with your fist compared to a normal block which would be super hard to break. 1.17 changes, now they will break a little bit easier than normal blocks, but you can't instantly break them. But you can still use Silk Touch to prevent from getting silverfish to come out of them. In the past, two shulkers right beside each other would not be acceptable and they would both attempt to teleport away from each other. Where in 1.17, they can sit right beside each other no problem. In 16, if you place some food on the campfire and then you extinguish it, like using a shovel, the food would all fall off of it. Now you can place all the food on there and when you extinguish it, it's going to stay there. So you can make these cool looking stove tops where you have your food cooking. In the past, igniting all that TNT with a flint still was never actually counted to the player's statistics. So you couldn't really keep track of how many you blew up. This has now changed in 1.17, so every time you use your flint still, statistics is going to show it. Right here is a flint and still and it said it was used one time. Before, if you're lucky enough to get a suspicious stew, you couldn't actually eat it unless you were hungry. But now in 17, you can eat any of these suspicious stews without having any hunger. This is great as some of them can give different types of buffs, like saturation. This in combination with my suspicious stew farm can actually have some pretty powerful effects. When you hop out of a boat, it sometimes will put you in some weird positions, but in 1.17, it'll actually try to put you on some nearby land. This can be effective for many things, including speedrunning, where you don't dismount inside of water. Netherite stars are resistant to explosions, but if they were inside of a container, they would end up getting destroyed with the container. So now we blow up the item with the stars inside of it. Now we'll do this in 1.17. And you can see it will instead blow the container up, but all the items will drop on the ground. Now if another explosion goes off, that means everything will blow up except for the netherite stars, which are blast resistant. And there they are, right there. This means if you have stuff inside of containers, it could take up to 5 TNT just to get to your items. And there's some really cool stuff you could do with this, which I covered in this video linked below. In some cases, shift clicking items into your hotbar could prevent you from getting the advancement. Where 1.17, this is no longer the case. You might have noticed that pistons moving stuff in 1.16 was extremely laggy, especially if there was a lot of tile entities around, which can be blocks being moved. Where in 1.17, we should no longer have this excessive amount of lag when moving tons of blocks with pistons. Before, you couldn't see an end portal from underneath and only could see it from above. Now in 17, you can see it from above as well as from underneath. There was problems with pushing shulkers and also with sending shulkers through the exit end portal. They would end up at the same cords as they went in, but in the overall, so often near 0, zero rather than the world spawn point. In 1.17 they fixed both these bugs, so they fixed it to make it easier to push shulkers, and they also made it so these guys will end up at a real spawn point instead of at 0.0. zero. And there he is right there. In past versions of Minecraft, you could take advantage of how the fog was placed in around the player to look at objects very far away. Over the distance is some bamboo hills, which are really cool looking. If I look straight ahead, I can't really see them very well. But if I look at them with the corner of my screen, you can see I can actually see them over there with no fog whatsoever. And you can use your FOV to change the effect of this. Notice that I can't really do that with a FOV of 30. Let's turn it to Pro. And now I can really do that. I can really zoom in with the corner and look at those islands. Where if it looks straight ahead, it's very difficult to see them. 1.17 changed this completely. So notice I'm looking at the islands. They're kind of foggy out there. And if I turn and try to look at them at the corner of my screen, they are still foggy. So it doesn't matter where I look at them. I can't get a better view of them. Even changing the FOV to the maximum, notice it's not going to have any effect on the objects in the distance. And the new spyglass, it doesn't help at all either. Everything still ends up looking foggy. So you're going to have to get used to this new change. Or you can down like Optifine, which can remove fog. In 1.16, shulkers can fit nicely underneath of slabs. But in 1.17, any shulkers in this position will try to leave it. In 1.16, naming items inside of an anvil would cause the items to be thrown out onto the ground when the anvil randomly breaks. This could cause items to accidentally get thrown in dangerous locations. In 1.17, the item will automatically go back into your inventory, so you don't have to worry about losing it. 
Before it was difficult to tempt a mob with their favorite item, such as like a sheep and wheat, if there was another player that was standing closer than the player which was holding wheat. Now this has been fixed, so in 1.17 the sheep will go right past the other player and ignore them and just focus on the player with the tempting item. Making it much easier to move mobs around crowded areas where there's other players. So many sneaky things added into the 1.17 Caves and Cliffs update part 1. If you guys enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like as well as subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future videos. Make sure to check out the videos in the description for more videos like this one and I will be putting out some more in the future as well. I would like to thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!